I believe it was James from Act One who invited us to share the story of our fuck-ups and to curse. So here I am confessing to a huge fuck-up that I made that cost my company customers and cost us a fuck ton of money. So, so what do I mean by uh, UX begins below the user interface? Um, even though our users may never see or interact directly with our information architecture, any assumptions that influence how we gather and collect data and display it back to them can uh, have cascading effects on, across our product. Case in point, my product, Eli Review. Eli was invented in a lab at Michigan State. It was an experiment and was never meant to be used outside our small group of researchers and students. And I designed Eli's information architecture based on the, uh, the practices of our small group. So just as an example of how that influenced, students would work together in the same room all the time, which meant they were always in the same time zone. And all of us had our assignments due at midnight on the exact same day. Because, that, because time data wasn't relevant, um, I used a date field in our MySQL database. So in the app, anytime there was a reference to time, there was nothing except year, month, day. And um, only when people who outside our group started to use our prototype did we realize our bias. Um, in many cases, teachers and students are never face-to-face. -face. They don't always live in the same time zone. And often, uh, instructors wanted assignments due at varying times throughout the day. So this is where the consequences of our biases became clear. The date format that I chose initially meant that we had no way to store time values in our database. Even if we wanted to add uh, time features into the user interface, there would be no way to store them on the back end, so they'd be useless. So to better understand how users experience time in our system, we did some research and came up with some stories about time and UX. We found that first that they didn't want to do the math, surprisingly, to convert Eastern Standard Time to their local time, and that instructors wanted flexible uh, but specific due dates for their assignments. We also found that instructors wanted to know the time zones where their students lived, and that both instructors and students wanted clear details about the submission timeliness of individual students. So the first major change we had to make to Eli's UX was to the database. Uh, MySQL has several options for storing time and date values, but we settled on a field type of, time, of date time because we could get time values and date values in one single field. And having selected a date format, we, selected, uh, we had to select a specific way of storing that time, and we selected universal coordinated time because it gives us a universal timestamp. Doesn't matter where you live on the planet, uh, UTC is gonna, is gonna be the same wherever you go. Um, but then we also had to prompt users to give us their time zones. So now that we could store and retrieve that information, we could change the UI. We added a new date picker that lets users select increments of time as well as the date, and a modal showing instructors uh, the time zones that their students lived in. Uh, we added a time zone dropdown on our sign up and setting forms, and our app uses browser metadata to make a best guess about where uh, students uh, were, about where users were living, so we could select it for them automatically. But then we we tested that string as well, so it helped them helped users select the their time zone easier. And then we could actually start building the, the cases, building for the cases that our users described for us. This is a completion uh, report that we created that shows the, the timestamp the user submitted as well as the difference. So instructors could get a, a sense of who was showing up on time. And then this interface is abstracted a layer above that. It shows uh, timeliness for the entire duration of the course. So an instructor can see at a glance who's doing the work, who's showing up for practice, who they could reasonably expect to improve. So our experience with time at Eli Review uh, taught us a very valuable lesson in UX. Uh, we learned that failing to collect the data necessary to enact our user stories is, uh, uh, causes frustrating user experiences and is hella expensive to fix in the long run. So the takeaways, I, I highly recommend you try and work out the biases in your information architecture before a single database table gets built. Draw that stuff on paper, show it to your engineers, get a lot of feedback. But then, when it comes to time, I'm still working on confronting my own Eastern time zone privilege. The way I try and deal with that is every time I mention a time in an email, I put EST at the end, just to force a habit to make myself aware. And then if the person I'm talking to lives outside that time zone, I convert it to their time zone. So that helps me keep that bias in mind. And if you're interested in time, again, this is only five minutes and there is so much to learn about time. I'll tweet out these references later, but they're important because they help us understand the differences in formats, um, why time is so complicated, and then um, recognizing and confronting our own biases. So thank you for your time. My name's Mike McLeod, and I'll see you on LinkedIn.